Hello, everybody. Welcome to GCRE TV. My name is Gavin Layton, and today we're going to be speaking with Elliot Horowitz from Age Equities about his thoughts on COVID-19, uh, the impact it's having on his industry, and what he sees happening. Also, what's going on with his clients, and how he can sort of help advise people on, from his perspective, how they could deal with this as they go forward. Elliot, hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, Gavin. How are you? How's everything? I'm doing fantastic. The weather is fine. It's still sunny, so we're we're right. happy still. We're in, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. It's good, good. Elliot, it's nice of you to join us on the show today. Um, we just wanted to pick your brains a little bit on GCRE, you know, about your thoughts on COVID, how that's impacting your business, your clients, the relationships that you have with, with, with potential prospects. Um, what do you think is going to be happening in the industry come the next three to six months or 12 months down the line? And also any little additional information like, you know, pointers, tips, tricks for people to consider as they go forward. Don't worry, we're not going to drill you too much because you know, we're friends. I, I have nothing to add, so that's great. <laughs> okay, good. So Elliot, uh, just a little bit like, you know, what's your thoughts on COVID right now? What's happening? Uh, what do you see going on in your particular industry with your plan? Right. Uh, with so, your clients? So, so COVID specifically, you know, I, I guess everyone's become an expert overnight, right? We all have to have an opinion. And we all have to understand it. And you know, most of us, you know, myself included, don't really know what's really happened or has been happening. We do know that, you know, in, in major markets, you know, certainly industry has been affected, you know, terribly in New York, you know, with the, the office buildings being shut down, specifically retail being shut down, now opening, restaurants have been shut down, now opening. So clearly this this virus or whatever it's that people are calling it today has impacted in a way most people in March could never, never anticipated myself included, right? Yeah. So and that's that's a certainty. What what happens tomorrow and next week, you know, and then three months from now, like nobody knows, right? So I keep reading and hearing different things. It, it's hard to know. I, I think one part of me kind of thinks it's all nonsense, right? And the other yeah. part of me thinks there's something really, you know, wrong going on right now. And, and clearly, there's been unfortunate you know, circumstances of death. And that is always unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but how it relates you know, to, to the world in general, I don't know. Specifically in New York uh, and other major, major markets, and specifically New York has gotten hurt the most with, you know, we, we have the most densely populated office space on the planet and the train system and all of that. But slowly but surely, I've seen some life come back, which is good, right? Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, that's always a good thing right so it, you know I, I work in brooklyn in the summertime i've been in new jersey but i work in brooklyn yeah. and, and the area there is always very vibrant very robust and lately even including yesterday it was kind mm -hmm. of quiet still in my building in and around the area it's dumbo it's a you know very vibrant neighborhood um still quiet but again you still see you seeing some signs of things picking up slowly Right, and that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. So, Elliot, a little bit about Age Equities. What it is all about, just to give the um, the viewers an idea of what it is you do, uh, before we kind of go into more deeper questions. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on what Age Equities does and what it is you do? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. We are a um, small friends and family debt and equity business. We provide capital um, to sponsors, to invest, to to operators. Uh, on on the equity side, it's uh, mostly in multifamily in New York, New Jersey, uh, Atlanta, Florida, where we've already executed on a, a deals on all those states. Um, all multifamily, there's been a couple of mixed use pieces, a couple of development deals, but mostly it's existing cash flow in multifamily as equity. And then as debt, we provide uh, debt financing, whether it's senior loans, uh, mezzanine loans, or preferred equity. Yeah to sponsors uh, well, that's mostly been new york we're expanding we've, we've done a little bit in new jersey we are now trying to we, we almost had a nice very very nice size loan close in florida but the last second the borrower didn't need money which is always fun to do right right yes. so we're, we're slowly expanding that debt book out and i do say slowly with the emphasis on uh, emphasis on slowly uh expanding that debt book out to other states um, north carolina we're looking at something uh, we're looking at making loans on a portfolio of, of properties across the eastern, uh, in the south, southeast. Um, so that's again senior financing, mezzanine, and preferred equity. It's mostly yeah. multifamily land, 
or just other people have real estate, just sort of other liquidity needs that don't necessarily have a business plan wrapped around it, yeah. but just a, a low leverage liquidity need that a borrower needs uh, for you know for whatever they need. Yeah. So based on what you just said, Elliot, I mean, you know, given it's a financial market that you're in, you know, is one would think that you know it's been heavily impacted. Finance has been heavily impacted with the COVID. What's, what what do you, what are you seeing happening right now with your customers or clients? Um, or what do you see the banks or the lenders doing? Um, you know, with this whole COVID thing that's happening. Right. So I think in the early stages when this first happened, call it March, you know, whatever that date was, March 13th, yeah. uh, 14th, or whatever the date was, a lot of uh, banks and private lenders started telling their, their their existing borrowers, we're not doing the deal starting tomorrow, right? So that was a shock to the system. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we actually closed a couple of loans during that period um, and got paid off on another loan during that period by a bank that's still executed, right? So yeah. I think and every private lender will do what they have to do to stay in business and, and or, or live up to certain things or not live up to certain things. Um, you know, fast yeah. forward to today, um, I thought there was going to be a significantly greater need of, of capital for borrowers, and it just seems like a lot of borrowers are chasing deals they can't get or, mm. or, or think they're going to get, but only if they had this and this type of financing, which still isn't available, right? Yeah. So if you want 100% financing, you know, maybe there's a crazy person out there that will do that. Uh, for, for, for hopefully a high rate, right? But uh, I, I think there's been a, a slow shift in borrower expectation, and in, which is a buyer, right? Borrowers typically buyers. Yeah. And yeah. sellers, depending on the asset class, are either giving things up or they're not, right? Multifamily is still pretty strong. You know, hotels are super weak. Uh, retail is very weak. But I think within the very weak, there is some opportunity as well from both as debt and equity yeah, uh, certainly in, in the strongest opportunity, right? So their opportunities are out there. Yeah, you know, our investors, some are, you know, chomping at the bit to put money to work, and others mm -hmm. are sort of taking a wait and see approach. Yeah, we have a lot of deals we're reviewing personally. Not a lot's getting done lately. Um, yeah, for a variety of reasons. You know, rate and leverage is a, is a key component of what we look for, and counterparty risk. Who we're lending to, who we're investing with, always very important. But there's opportunity. There's certainly opportunity uh, here going forward. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Um, so you said earlier that you know multifamily is still quite strong. Do you see multifamily coming out of this as one of the top top category classes in the sector, or do you think like mobile home parks are still going to be strong? Um, maybe there's an opportunity for retail space, as you know, shop fronts on the the main shopping strips. Are closing down, but I think that's going to be seen as opportunity zones now for investing. Right. So, so multifamily is very strong for the most part in, in good areas. Single family rentals are very strong uh, for the most part. Very strong. People need a place to live, right? Most people yeah. who most people who are making money will pay rent. They feel obligated. And they'll do it, right? Yeah. Some people who you know unfortunately have financial circumstances that don't allow them to pay rent right now, and it's very unfortunate. And they're gonna have a, they'll, they'll be they'll be challenged to pay that. And there are certain government programs and some unemployment money has helped some people, which is great, right? Um, and some people will take advantage of the situation, as some people tend to do. Um, mm -hmm. But generally speaking, people need a place to live. People want to pay rent. They want to do the right thing. There's always the outlier of people that are having a hard time, unfortunately, very unfortunately, mm -hmm. and those that maybe can get by, but they be a little a little pushing to get by. So yeah. well, family will stay strong. Retail, you know, if you have some shopping center in the middle of nowhere, you have a problem, right? If you, I, I know a guy now, he's buying a, a bankrupt shopping center. It's vacant. There's, there's one tenant yeah. at 100,000 square feet. He's either going to make a fortune or struggle, right? It's yeah. one or the other. And there's no in between. It's binary, right? Making a fortune or struggling. Yeah. There's no in between with that. And, he made, and I hope he makes a fortune, right? And it's a, we were going to finance it, and I just couldn't figure out how to do it. We didn't do it, right? Um, and I still think you may make a fortune, right? Um, yeah. On retail, we've been looking at buying something in, 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 in Brooklyn, lending on it, and then potentially partnering up as the yes. equity. But that's also changed dramatically because now other tenants in and around that area have just filed bankruptcy, large tenants. Uh, it changes the dynamic. 
You know, yeah. strong retail is always going to exist. There is, mm -hmm. there are strong retail players out there that yeah. are low levered, who buy their product right, who sell it right, and it works. Mm -hmm. they're urban, they're densely populated locations. Um, it'll work for them. A lot yeah. of bankruptcies in retail have been very high levered, private equity uh, owned companies that have sucked out every dollar for themselves and not really reinvested in their business, right? Mm -hmm. so those are the majority or very vast majority of companies that have gone bankrupt. And that doesn't mean they won't reiterate them, you know, reinvigorate themselves as something new going forward or somebody else will reinvigorate them yeah. in the brand, working the brand and, and making money again. But it's certainly, uh, there are well-run retails that will do well. And, mm -hmm. But it's but it is difficult when you see you know one vacancy after another after another, yeah. Locations who's going to fill those voids? But but there are some bright spots to it. You know, a friend of mine in Florida yeah. said his shopping centers are doing well. A friend of mine in Louisiana said he's got three tenants bidding on one space, big space. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there are pockets of it. New York is its own galaxy at the moment. Yeah, so mo mostly politically related, unfortunately. Yeah, but it's its own galaxy at the moment. Um, well, I actually heard today that uh, the Hilton has closed their Times Square branch down, which I is quite a shame because it's an iconic building. I stayed there one year and it was absolutely right. marvelous. Right. You know, it, 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 there's there a lot of that. Look, we have we have a loan on a piece of retail land in, in, in Manhattan, and I'm very happy to have that loan. But, you know, it's a great piece. And uh, we underwrote it with another partner. We underwrote it. You know, if, if, and if things go wrong, you know, what, what if rent gets sliced in half and, you know, we're still okay, right? So yeah, I, I think that's good. But yeah, hotels, you know, another hotel just traded the other day. I forget the exact numbers in New York. And I think it was like 40% discount or $40 million discount. I don't remember the exact yeah. number. It was just the other day. So hotels are an operating company yeah. kind of business. And New York is, again, challenging. You know, short stay hotels, extended stay are doing well. Today I toured some a portfolio of uh, bed and breakfasts here in, in the Jersey Shore area. And they've all, the one, there were six of them, you know, one of them was closed all summer long and the other ones were busy all summer long, right? So, you know, on the beachfront, right? So I, I guess hotel business will um, vary by location to location. But I think within the hotel business, there's probably some, some opportunity. I don't know how to run a hotel, right? Yeah. But, uh, I think there's probably some opportunity for for shrewd yeah. operators who can withstand, you know, the yeah. The, 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 the New York metric is like 25 percent occupancy, yeah. which I think it's one of the. I don't know how anyone can make money on that, but if you can sort of coast and break even and figure it out, you know, hopefully this this COVID thing has to end one day, and uh, and, and we can stop stop talking about it. 300 times yeah. a day, right? Mm -hmm. Well, exactly, correct. So, I mean, Elliot, in your line of work, I mean, for somebody who wants to go into the industry, who's already in the industry, and probably panicking with what's going on, they probably bought a property, it's probably negative right now, it's probably wondering, you know, hey, am I going to have to sell my property or lose money in it? What would be your advice for somebody like that right now? I, so, I, I can give you a real life situation if you want it, right? Yes, so, sure, let's do that. So, no names. I don't want. I don't want to hurt the innocent, right? But a uh, so. we have an investment that um, two years ago. We're, you know, we're equity investors, not operators. And two years ago, I told the sponsor, you know, it's not going well. Why don't you just sell it and be done with it? Like you're on your second capital call, I'm not going to fund it. No, I don't think anyone's going to fund it. And why don't just lose a little, lose, lose a little bit of money and move on, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no law that says you have to make money every day of the week. Right, right. Um, and, and people don't make money every day of the week. So that real life situation was we probably could have lost ten percent, fifteen percent. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the number because we didn't really actively pursue it. They, they didn't really want to pursue it. Lo, lo and behold, if we had to sell today, we'd probably lose all the money. Right, which is which is really not a good scenario to no, be. Able. Not, yeah. But l luckily enough, I guess um, we have the staying power because right now we have, you know, this problem and that problem, the COVID problem, right? So it's hard to sell property in New York. So luckily enough, we can probably refinance something, stick it out in a year or so and see what happens, right? The problems come down to, you know, what, what your business plan was buying a property. So if you bought a rent stabilized building and we have other challenges with a bunch of rent stabilized buildings we own, um, yeah. that's a man-made disaster, right? The laws changed, they took away the yeah. posts. 
and you can't you cannot make money now theoretically so mm -hmm. I, think, I think the situation is depending on did you buy a rent stabilized building in manhattan at a three cap hoping to turn it into a five cap which you no longer yeah. do which wasn't a good business plan to begin with or did you buy a piece of land in something milwaukee hoping to put we work there like I, I i think if you're if you're high levered if you're high levered and you're borrowing you have a definite problem unless you can pay that loan down or affect your business plan if you're low levered and you have a long very long term horizon you can withstand you know the, the short term pressures that, that yeah. come from economic change i guess i guess you know if somebody told me in february the economy was going to be closed down because of a virus I would, have, I would have said, I probably did say, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. And stop watching, you know, science fiction movies and watching. <laughs> yeah. right? But it did happen. And you couldn't have underwritten that problem, right? No. no you could have underwritten. You could underwrite 20% rent roll decrease or whatever in a, in a recession, let's say. You can't underwrite, you know, a global shutdown of the economy. It's just yeah. very difficult to underwrite something, to, to fathom something like that. But it's unfortunately happened, right? So if you have a property now, if you're low leverage, you're probably fine. You'll figure it out, you'll work it out, you'll tweak something. If you have a very high levered loan that was based upon refinancing that out at, you know, and within a year or something, you know, it's significantly more challenging. You need to be prepared to pay down that loan to restructure your mm -hmm. stack and um, figure out if, if the long term business plan is viable, you need to figure out what to do in the short term. If you were predicated on some nonsensical pie in the sky valuation, you're probably not going to get it anyway. And you may have a loss on your hand that you have to you know, take immediately. Yeah, it's really a deal by deal, case by case. Uh, okay. Scenario. So I guess your thoughts is like everybody else. You know, they're just waiting for this pandemic to, to be done with and over. Although we do seem to be having a second wave here in Europe, uh, where everything is shutting down. London, where well, the UK is shut down, we can't go there anymore. Right. Spain is shutting down. Denmark, I was supposed to go there this weekend. That's that's shut, so I can't go there anymore. Um, right. I know the states as well. They, from what I understand, you guys are still in the first wave. The second wave haven't hit us yet. And the rent could be really, really good, or it could be really, really bad. But it's yeah, just I don't know. Things. I don't know, right? I uh, look. Yeah. We're, we're looking for opportunities because yeah. my horizon is ten or twenty years. If I'm making, if I'm making, if I'm buying a property, the, the horizon is almost forever, unless yeah. things change, right? And then we could, like, we sold some buildings over the last year that were performing but we just had enough and we decided to sell them and be done with it we're selling another building because we got a good offer on it luckily very luckily enough for other things we can't sell because there's no market for these buildings or, or, the, or the price points are where we would not sell them anyway right but we're looking for opportunity for sure both debt and equity um and if, if, if another shutdown comes it comes right and hopefully it won't hopefully it doesn't um, I, don't, I don't think it will necessarily. Um, you know, people for the most part are taking more care and more concern for the most part. I don't think it will happen. It may, and then we'll, if it does, we'll you know we'll, we'll deal with that then, right? But generally speaking, the longer time frame horizon you have, the better off you are. You know, riding these waves that come out yeah. of nowhere. This comes out of nowhere and shuts you down, right? You can't. Yeah. Control. And the man-made disaster of the rent stabilized laws specifically in new york mm -hmm. and that's a political game and that that uh, no one knows when that will change I, that if COVID disappeared tomorrow new york investors in multifamily still have the political problem yes. um, of the landlord being the bad guy and it's just not an accurate description of the average landlord in new york so where do you see the opportunity being once this is all post COVID? the opportunities are in, in, in any industry look uh industrial is super strong right in a lot of cases last mile industrial has been great there's definitely going to be opportunity buying retail really cheap buying retail debt really cheap there's opportunities in very strong neighborhoods that have good rent growth good schools you know, good good job good transportation there's opportunities probably we, we focus sort of on the eastern part of the country Mm -hmm. very specific areas but it's a big it's a big country there may be amazing opportunities in uh, wisconsin you know i don't know right but uh right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, you know i know our markets where we're operating and trying to yeah. try to get things done if someone showed me the greatest deal in milwaukee i'm not sure i would understand it right but the, so, for some guy in milwaukee probably will but there's op i think there's opportunity in every asset class yeah um, if you're if you're a low levered debt investor there's tons of opportunities if you're a high levered investor 
there's also tons of opportunities. Just just mm -hmm. the risk is okay. the risk metrics are a lot different, right? All right, cool. And Elliot, uh, just for the viewers, if anybody wants to get hold of you, what's the best way to contact you? Uh, you can always call me. That's always great. My number is 917-748-1955. You can email me at uh, Elliot at hequities.com. It's E-L-L-I-O-T at hequities.com. And I'm always open for conversation, you know, brainstorm, talk about ideas, and uh, you know, see if there's a way to uh, transact business. Great. So guys, um, Elliot is the guy that we would normally go to for our interviews or for uh, any kind of advice that we need when it comes to debt and equity financing. He is the guy to go to on the East Coast. Uh, we highly recommend him. If anybody has a question or they want to just read some, as he said, he's the guy to speak to. Um, Elliot, I thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. Uh, we look forward to having you again on the show. All right. right. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do some more. I think one of the things we want to do with you, uh, just for the viewers, is um, maybe we could do a three a, a three part series on you know debt and equity finance and things to consider. Sure. And all those things. So, guys, look forward to that. It's going to be coming soon. We're going to advertise it on our social media and also if you're on our email list. You'll get a copy of that when it goes live. But Elliot, we thank you a lot for your time today. We really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to speaking to you soon again. Gavin, my pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for Take having care. me. Bye. Have a great night.